last night. <laughs> so now, you know, people get their own ideas. That's how you got the Methodists, the Calvinists, the uh, uh, Pres uh, Presbyterians, Protestants. The Protestants the first ones that broke off, broke off from the Catholic Church. That's how you got the Catholic Church, too. Everybody coming up with their own ideas, and this suffice. But are they teaching the teachings of the church, of the church? No, sir. The true church? No, sir. Go ahead and read. Deprecating the divisive character and the evils of human creed and party chauvinists, they determined to take the Bible as their only confession of faith uh -huh. with Christian character under the new birth. As the only test of of church, as the only test of church membership uh -huh. and Christian fellowship, leaving each individual in full possession of the right of individual interpretation. Ooh! Just because I got a Bible, that's all I do is bring it to church, and I can interpret it any way I want to. Whoa! This is what they say, and I'm a Christian. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> Because I hear that all, I hear that pretty much every week. Yeah, I started back talking to the brother. <laughs> I hear this. Everybody got their own. I think this. I think that. Well, I'll see it this way. Well, I'll see it. What? What does it matter what you see it, man, if it ain't what was written in the book? How does that matter? That's right, brother. Come on. You finished that? No, sir. No, sir. It says, uh, let's back up a little. It says, uh, Christian's characters under the new birth as the only test of church membership and Christian fellowship, leaving each individual in full possession of the right of individual interpretation in all matters of opinion on theological questions. <laughs> Everybody got their own opinion, in other words, That's and it. interpretation. Go ahead and turn that page. We just gonna give you an idea of how many churches there are around the world. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Just turn to six oh seven. Says Christian population by continents. By continents. Go ahead. It's got uh, says Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Protestants, and it says Europe, Asia, Africa. North America, South, uh -huh. South America, uh -huh. Oceania, Grand, no, that's the Grand Tour. And it says the, the Christian faith greatly outnumbers any of the other faiths of the world. Ooh, you hear that? There's more Christians in the world than any other faiths or churches or, 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 or religions, I should say. There's more Christians than anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what they say now. But are they teaching the teachings of the church, though? The church, the true church. No, sir. Go ahead. You finish that? It says the Christian faith greatly outnumbered any of the other faiths of the world. Uh huh. And is the most aggressive, active, and prosperous. It's most aggressive, active. In other words, you don't agree with us, we come against you. That's what they did in the Crusades. And that's what's going to happen again when, at the return, just before the Lord returns. You know, don't be preaching that word in, a, in, a, in that name no more else. We're going to cut your head off. It's written. Look, you're going to have to take this mark or else we're going to cut your head off. You want to eat, you want to sell, and all that, you got to take this mark. Oh, you'll take this mark and we're going to cut your head off. But these... Uh, Christians. Now, that, that's what the Bible says now. Let's go now. Let's go to our 1 Corinthians the 16th chapter. 1 Corinthians 16. Now, you know, they all get, they, a lot of them give their own opinions about things, right? Their own interpretations, right? So now here's one of the things that they uh, interpret to me that God changed the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day of the week. We have 1 Corinthians 16, and we're going to pick up at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 16 and 1. Go ahead and read it. It says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to uh -huh. the churches of Galatia, uh -huh. even so do ye. 
Upon the first day of the week. Now let me just say something right here. So he said, he said, even to the churches of Galatia, right? Who was in Galatia? These are Gentiles, aren't they? Yes, sir. So you know, you because you got people saying that the Gentiles, which are the Caucasian, they're not supposed to be in the church. This word ain't for them. Well, here in the church, this is the teachings of the church in, in the Bible. That the Galatians, they had their own camp there, didn't they? They had their own camps. He said, now concerning connection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. So they had their own camps. The Gentiles had their own camps right here under the eldership of Paul, though. You understand, an Israelite. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Verse 2. Uh -huh. It says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store uh -huh. as God had pro prospered him, uh -huh. that there be no gathering when I come. So now, but since he asked him to gather on the first day of the week, now, or, or they were uh, collecting money, rather, on the first day of the week, right here, this changed the Sabbath day from the seventh day to the first day. <laughs> because they collected some money right here. He said, for the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that he be no, there be no gathering when I come. Go ahead and read. And when I come, whosoever ye shall approve by your letters, uh -huh. then will I send to bring your liberality, your liberty unto Jerusalem. Go ahead. And if it be met, and if it be meet, excuse me, that I go also, they shall go with me. Now, so because they was collecting money on the first day of the week, they try to make this out to be the Sabbath day. But you don't see Sabbath nowhere around here, do you? It gets a little worse. Let's go to Acts the 20th chapter. Acts 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Acts 20 and verse 5. Go ahead and read it. These going before tarried for us at Troas. Uh -huh. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. Now see, now, now look, look, he said we sailed from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. This is one of the teachings of the church right here. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. If you ain't teaching this in your church, then you are not the church. Because they are still teaching about what? The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead and read. It says, After the days of unleavened bread, it came to them to Troy uh -huh. in five days, where we abode seven days. Go ahead. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. Stop right there. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to do what? Break bread. But we saw earlier that they were breaking, and at the second chapter, they were breaking bread daily, wasn't they? Did that change the Sabbath day? No, sir. <laughs> because they was eating? <laughs> he said, and upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, uh-huh. Paul preached unto them. Ready to depart on the morrow. Uh huh. And continue this speech until midnight. Now, so where do you see Sabbath change at around here? Do you see Sabbath change anywhere? Because this, this is the scripture that people go to when they say that the Lord changed the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day. Paul broke bread on the first day of the week. So what? <laughs> I'm like, okay, where do you see Sabbath change at? Then he told you before that. We sailed to from Philippi, from Philippi during the days of what? Unleavened bread. So now they keep unleavened bread, which was the commandment of God, and this is what they had, they had to be teaching if they keeping it, right? So how can they change the Sabbath day if they keep it a feast of unleavened bread? Everybody understand what I'm saying? This is the, the church's teaching. The church is teaching. Let's go now. Let's go to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew 28. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1 just to show you. And I always like to go here and show you that the Sabbath is still in order even today. And that is why we keep the Sabbath. Because it's a part of the church's teachings. That's why. 
Matthew 28 and 1, go ahead and read it. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, uh -huh. came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Now he said, the end of the Sabbath, what day is the Sabbath? The seventh day. As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, what's the first day of the week? Sunday. We call it Sunday. So the Sabbath, we still got the Sabbath, which is the seventh day, and we still got Sunday, which is what? The first day of the week. Now, this is after Jesus died and rose from the grave. Keep reading. It says, verse 2. Uh-huh. And behold, there was a great earthquake. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone uh -huh. from the door. Go ahead. And sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his remnant white as snow. Uh-huh. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, uh -huh. which was crucified. Go ahead. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, uh -huh. come, see the place where the Lord lay. So now, why do they? Why do we still have the seventh-day Sabbath right here? Why? Because we read that it was a, 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 a perpetual covenant, didn't we? And perpetual means what? Everlasting covenant. So they still keeping the Sabbath right here, aren't they? What man do you know at that, during that time or this time can change the Sabbath? Certainly Paul couldn't change the Sabbath, could he? Peter, the Lord gave Peter the keys to the kingdom, right? He said, whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. But look, did Peter come and say, well, no, we ain't got to keep the Sabbath no more congregation? We're going to keep the first day of the week. Did he say that? No, sir. And even if he had, then he would do what? Breaking the covenant because of perpetual covenant. Make that plan, brother. No, man, you can, you can break it. You can't do away with it, though. Because men break it, the, the Sabbath, they do that. They break that covenant, what? Every week. But you can't do away with it, though. You cannot... Do away with this when Jesus died and rose from the grave, and we still talk about the Sabbath day. Let's go now. Let's go to Psalm 111. Psalm 111. We ain't got this in no particular order, so y'all just bear with me. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna hold y'all long. So, uh, Psalm 111 and 7. Psalm 111 and 7. We're looking at the true church and its teachings. The true church. Because there's churches, people call themselves Christians, church all over the world. But are they dealing with the uh, teachings of the true church? Psalm 111 and 7. Psalm 111 and 7. Go ahead and read it. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. Uh -huh. All his commandments are sure. All of his commandments are sure. Go ahead and read it. They stand fast forever. They stand fast for what? Forever. So now I should be going around as a Christian in the Christian church telling nobody that you ain't got to keep the commandments then, should I? Because right here we just read, he said their commandments are sure. They stand steadfast forever. So if I'm walking around talking about you ain't got to keep no commandments and everything then, I'm not a part, I'm not teaching the teachers of the true church then, am I? You call yourself church all you want to, but if you ain't teaching the teachers of the true church and doing those things which they done, then they don't mean nothing, do it. You're just spinning your wheels. Like Paul said, I'm, I'm, I'm as one that beateth the air. And that's all you're doing is beating the air. They stand fast forever. Go ahead. And ever. Uh -huh. And are done in truth and unrighteousness. And are done in truth and righteousness. Go ahead. And uprightness. Uh -huh. He sent redemption into his people. He have commanded his covenant forever. Uh huh. Holy and reverend is his name. Holy and he have commanded his covenant. He said it twice, didn't he? Yes, sir. He wants you to get this. He said he commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Now, wait a minute now. So now, do you see in the church, uh, in the Bible, the teachers of the church, them calling any man reverend? 
But if you all over the world, over the Christian churches, what they call their preachers? Reverend. But holy and reverend, that's God's name, ain't it? You don't see Peter, Paul, none of them brothers walking around. Hey, hey, Reverend uh, Peter. Hey, Reverend Paul. You don't see them doing that, do you? Somebody ain't read this. Say, holy. He said, redemption unto his people. Who redeemed the people? Jesus did. He have commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hold it, hold it. Now, this is the teaching of the church now. Because we still dealing with the church, aren't we? Because Moses started the church all the way back in the wilderness. Down here in Psalms, we still dealing with the church, aren't we? He said, the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. What do they tell you the church is now? You don't have to fear God. Is that the teachings of the, of the true church? No, sir. You ain't got to fear God. So when you see fear, just put love there. Everything is all right. <laughs> but that ain't the teachings of the true church, though, is it? He said, the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom, of good understanding of all, all they, go ahead and read. That do his commandments. That do his commandments. Go ahead. His praise endureth forever. Now, let's go on. Because we're looking at the true church and his teachers. Now, remember, just because we are the old covenant, Moses had a church too, didn't he? But Jesus had his old building too, and his church too, didn't he? Let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to Matthew the 19th chapter. Let's go to Matthew 19 and see if Jesus kept the commandments. We know he kept the Sabbath, right? He the Lord of the Sabbath. Matthew 19, Matthew 19, and we're gonna pick it up in verse 16. Matthew 19 and 16. Go ahead and read it. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now he asked him a simple question, didn't he? What thing? And this is a, it's a simple question, but it's a most important question, though, isn't it? He said, "What thing must I do to get eternal life?" What did Jesus say? And he said unto him, "Uh huh." Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Uh huh. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, uh huh. Keep the command. If you go in into eternal life, do what? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Well, isn't that what Moses uh, and then were doing when they thought we keep the did the Lord give them the commandments? Isn't that we just what well, we just read through the times of David? They was keeping the commandments. See, they stand fast forever. And now Jesus is telling you right here, look, if you go in into life, in other words, if you want to get eternal life, then you gotta keep the commandments. Go ahead and read. 18. Uh-huh. He said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear fruit. Now he witness. break it down to him to, to take commandments in me. Yes. Now, you know, everybody should be all, you're going to call you this basic right here. If you're going to call yourself a, a Christ, the Christian church, then you should be teaching this. This is basic knowledge right here. Go ahead and read. Honor thy father and thy mother. Uh huh. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Keep reading. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth. See, you see, he, he said, I've been doing these things. Why? Because he understood that the covenant of God, that you had to keep these commandments, that they stood fast forever. Yes, sir. He understood this. Go ahead and read. But, but something else had him. Something else had us give captivated too, though. <laughs> Something else had him. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. He said, all these things have I kept from my youth up. Uh-huh. But lack I yet. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, if thou would be perfect, go and sell that, that thou hast and give to the poor. Uh-huh. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Go ahead. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. Uh-huh. And he said, great possession. He had great possession. See, he went away sorrowful, just like you got these big ministers now. You start telling them they got to keep commandments and everything. Oh, we got to keep the commandments. And they rich. So they ain't giving that up. Just like this guy right here, though. He knew that he had to keep commandments, but his riches held him back 
for following the Lord. And just like now, men are being held back because they don't want to keep commands of the Lord and they don't want to give away the riches. You think if a brother start a big minister, one of these big ministers start telling people that you got to keep the laws and commands of God, that he's going to have a flock? Then where is money going to go? He just like this guy right here, he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. And men are not giving up their great possessions to follow the teachings of the church, the true church of God. Come on, brother. They ain't giving up their possessions to do that. What verse you stop at? 23. All right, now, let's go now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Let's see if one of the apostles, if this was one of the teachings, that they keep the commandments. 1 Corinthians 6, and we're going to pick it up. At verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Go ahead and read. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Now he said the unrighteous. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So now, what are, who are the unrighteous? Go ahead. Be not deceived, neither fornicate. Uh-huh. Nor idolater. Go ahead. Nor adulterer. Go ahead. Nor effeminate. Wait a minute. Now this, these are not, all of these are not the Ten Commandments, are they? But it is the law, though, is it? Yes, sir. This is the law. Read that again. Yes, sir. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh-huh. Be not deceived, neither fornicator, uh -huh. nor idolater, Go ahead. nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. That is a man that acts like a woman. Come on. That ain't, that's in the law, right? Yes, sir. That ain't one of the Ten Commandments, though, is it? No, sir. So look, this is the teachings of the church. And this is everybody's favorite apostle. And look who he's teaching it to. The Corinthians, which are the Gentiles. See, all that law and everything, that's for Israel. They, that's for the Jews. That ain't for us Gentiles. He darkened at me, called himself a Gentile. <laughs> <laughs> but look who he's talking to. He's talking to the Gentiles right here. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. No effeminate. Uh -huh. No abusers of themselves with mankind. Go ahead. No thieves. No covetous, nor drunkards, nor re revelers, nor extortioners uh -huh. shall inherit the kingdom of None God. None of these sinners, a willful sinners, are going to inherit the kingdom of God. You see what he said? He said, nor them that uh, nor abuse of themselves with mankind. You know who that is, don't you? Nor abuse of themselves with mankind. We talk about the men that like men and the women that like women. Whoa. They don't pass a law that it's okay. Pass laws. But that's not the teachings of the true church, though, is it? Even got them up in the churches now, don't they? Some of them are preachers. But that ain't, the, that, ain't the treat, that ain't the teaching of the true church, is it? Because the Lord is going, well, I ain't going to, first he left, but we already know that they ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God, don't we? Right. <laughs> Verse 11, what does that say? And such were some of you. Uh-huh. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. Uh, well, wait a minute, how did they get washed and sanctified? By the word of God. Amen. By the word of God. Go ahead and read. He said some of you, some of was was feminine. And, well, anyway, go ahead and read. Brother. But ye are sanctified, but ye are justified uh -huh. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh-huh. And what? by the spirit of our God. And by the word of our God. That's that spirit. Everybody understand? Let's go now. Let's go. So, so they were teaching the same thing that Jesus taught about the law, right? They were teaching the same thing that Moses then was teaching about the law, right? This is the teachings of the church, the true church. Let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Man, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I don't care if, the, if, if there's a billion uh, of Christians. If they ain't teaching the true teachings of the true church of God, then they are not the church. They're only church by name, not by teachings. Matthew 24 3. Matthew 24 and 3. Go ahead and read it. And as he is set upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, uh -huh. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, 
and of the end of the world. Uh huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Now look who he's talking to his disciples now. Go ahead and read. Take heed that no man deceive you. Uh huh. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Now, we got many people coming, saying they come in the name of Christ. They all, we just read, they call themselves the Christian church, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, right? The Catholics. And they all are all, are all continents, aren't they? Call themselves the uh, uh, church or the Christians uh, of the church, right? Now, he said, for well, many shall come in my name, said, I am, first he said, don't let no man deceive you. And many people are being deceived, aren't they? Call themselves Christians. For many shall come in my name, said I'm Christ, and shall be deceived many. And that, we got them by the droves, don't we? They said he Christ, but they deceiving people, though. Skip down to verse 15. Go ahead. 15. Uh-huh. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Uh-huh. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then, skip, skip down to verse. So when you see this abomination, we know who that is, but we don't deal with him too much today. Skip down to verse 21. Skip down to verse 21. Go ahead. But then shall be great tribulation. Uh huh. Such as was not since the beginning of the world uh -huh. until this time. No, nor ever shall be. Now, what's the standard in the church when, it's, when it comes to great tribulation? How many years they say the tribulation is going to be? Seven years. Whoa. I mean, this is throughout the Christian uh, family when it comes to the church. But does the Bible, the true church of Christ, does it teach this though? No, sir. Let's find out. Because most people, the people are going to be in trouble. They're talking about going to be a, a seven-year tribulation. Oh, we got time. What's that three? Well, anyway, we're going to read how many years it's going to be. Let's see what the church teaches. Let's go to Daniel first. Let's go to Daniel, the 12th chapter. Daniel 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Pick it up at Daniel 12 and 1. Let's see what the, the church teaches the church, the true church teaches concerning the tribulation how long it's going to be. 12 and 1. Go ahead and read that. And at that time shall Michael stand up. Uh-huh. Great prince which standeth for the children of the, thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Uh-huh. As never was since there was a nation. Uh-huh. Even to that same time. Now we talk about great tribulation again, aren't we? Go ahead and read. And at that time thy people shall be delivered Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Skip down the verse. You know, people don't even talk about the book no more. They don't talk about the people that's written in the book, uh, 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 or the written in the book of the Lamb. They don't talk about this no more, do they? Skip down to verse 4. Go ahead and read it. But thou, old Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Uh-huh. Even to the time of the end. Uh-huh. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Go ahead. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Uh -huh. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, uh -huh. how long shall it be to the end of this world, to the end of these wonders? How long is it going to be to the end of these wonders? Because we're talking about the time of the end, aren't we? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. And I heard the man clothed in linen, clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river. Uh-huh. When he held up his right hand uh -huh. and his left hand into heaven. Uh-huh. And swore by him that liveth forever. Go ahead. And it shall be for a time. It's going to be for a time. Uh -huh. Times. Times. That's three days, ain't it? And a half. And a half. How many years is that? Yeah. But the, the church... The so-called Christian church been teaching how many years of tribulation? Seven. Well, we just read right here, according to this church right here, it's going to be what? Time, times, which is three and a half a time. That's three and a half years, ain't it? That's what's up. Well, hold on, though. Because some people are going to say, well, that's what you read that in the Old Testament, and that don't mean nothing. That don't mean no three and a half years. Because I had brothers to tell, actually tell me that. I said, okay. 
No problem. Let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to Revelation 11. <laughs> Revelation 11. Now look, we in the G or the Jesus church now, aren't we? Well, let's we in Revelation 11. Revelation 11 and 1. Revelation 11 and 1. Let's see what the true church is teaching. Christ's church. Revelation 11 and 1. Go ahead and read it. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. Uh-huh. And the angel stood saying, Rise and, me excuse me, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Uh-huh. But the court which is without the temple leave out uh -huh. and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot uh -huh. forty and two months. Ooh! He said the Gentiles, they going to tread underfoot the holy city, what? Forty, 40 and two, two months. months. How many years is that? Three and a half years. Just like the prophet said under that church, right? Yes, sir. And the prophet now, that we got the disciple of the Lord saying what? The same thing. Three and a half years. That's how long great tribulation is going to be. But hold on though. Would you read uh, 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 yeah, read verse 3 one more time. And I will give power in 3. <laughs> I'm sorry, verse 2. Yes, sir. But the court which, with the, which is without the temple leave out uh -huh. and measure it not. Go ahead. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot. 40 and 2 months. They're going to tread the holy city on the foot 40 and 2 months. That is 3 and a half years, ain't it? Verse 3. And I will give power to my two witnesses. Uh huh. And they shall prophesy a thousand, a thousand two hundred and three score days. Go ahead. Clothed in, in sackcloth. Uh huh. <clears throat> These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Now. Let's read this one more time. Let's read it again, so because we want to uh, get uh, more more than one uh, account of this, don't we? So now let's go to uh, Revelation 13, chapter Revelation 13, and we're gonna pick it up one. Now John is gonna give him a little more. He's gonna give him a little more. Revelation 13 and one. Go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, uh -huh. and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And now, now this is representing the, the Gentile dynasty right here. He said he has seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead and read. And upon his horns ten crowns. Uh huh. And upon his heads the name blasphemy. Go ahead. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Uh huh. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him power. And his seat. And great authority. So now this one that he saw, the dragon, that is Satan. He gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Go ahead and read. Number three. Uh-huh. Verse three. Yeah. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Uh-huh. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And all the world wondered after this beast. Go ahead. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Uh, wait a minute. They worship who? The dragon. The dragon. Don't you know people are worshiping Satan? If you ain't worshiping the teaching, the teachings of the true church, then who are you worshiping then? You worshiping Satan. That's it. Because he's the one who gave this beast, and I ain't going to even go off into who this beast is, really. <laughs> but of all the churches come up under this beast right here. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Uh-huh. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Uh-huh. And there was given unto him a, a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. He was going to give him power to continue how, much, how long? Forty and two months. How many years is that? Three and a half years. So how long is tribulation going to be there? Three and a half years. Not seven. You wait no seven, then you don't do not have the teachings of the true church. If you wait no seven, go ahead and read. Verse six. Uh-huh. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God. 
to blaspheme his name uh -huh. and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Go ahead. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Uh oh, now you ain't gonna want to be no saint then. Because he come to make war with the saints. <laughs> you ain't gonna want to be no saint then. Go ahead and read. Everybody holiday saints, right? right. Everybody holiday church. All over the world, we come make this war. You ain't gonna want to be one then. You know what they're gonna be doing? They're gonna be looking for us. But we're gonna be off, if God will it, we're gonna be off in the wilderness. Yeah. You understand? They're gonna be talking about where those, where those Israelites were just talking all that, the black people was talking all that stuff. We're gonna be off in the wilderness, God will it. Go ahead and read. What yeah. verse you at? Seven. Uh -huh. And it was given to him to make war with the saints uh -huh. and to overcome them. And power was given unto all kindreds and tongues and nations. Go ahead. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him uh -huh. whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Ooh, look, just imagine all these people that's called themselves Christians, right, that's called themselves the church, and they follow after this one because they don't understand that that's mama. You understand? Oh no, we ain't, we don't do like we don't do like that church do with they. No, if you go to church on Sunday, you follow a mama. That's right. You understand? So now look at what's gonna happen to them though. Read that verse again. Eight. Uh huh. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Uh huh. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb uh -huh. slain. From the foundation of the world. See, you see what's going on? He said, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. If your name ain't written in the book of life, then where you going? Whoa. You better, you better, people better wake up talking about they Christians, they the church and all this stuff. And then they following at the mama or papa, whatever you want to call them. Go ahead, verse 9. Nine. Uh huh. If any man have an ear, let him hear. If you got an ear, you better hear this. You better listen. Verse ten. He that lead, leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Uh huh. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Go ahead. Here is the patient and the faith of the saints. Here is the patient and the faith of the saints. Let's go to Mark. The first chapter, Mark 1. Mark the first chapter. This thing is serious, ain't it? You better stop, we better stop following at the teachings of the true church. You better stop following the, the, the teachings of the true church. Amen. And stop wondering after the uh well I ain't gonna even say that. Let's go now. Let's go to Mark the first chapter. I know a lot of people be like, man, go say it. No. Because <laughs> I ain't here really trying to offend nobody. Because I'm going with the teachers of the church. Amen. Let's keep it. <laughs> Mark 1 and 9. Mark 1 and 9. Mark 1 and 9. Mark 1 and 9. I don't want anybody to think we one of those radical Hebrew Israelites. Mark 1 and 9. Mark 1 and 9. Go ahead and read it. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John and Jordan. Skip down to verse 12. Go ahead and read it. And immediately the Spirit driven him into the wilderness. Now you see where that Spirit drove him into the wilderness, right? Just like the children of Israel, they were driven into the wilderness for 40 years, weren't they? Go ahead and read. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days. And he was there what? In the wilderness 40 days. A day for each year that the children of Israel was in the wilderness. They was in the wilderness for 40, 40 years. He was in the wilderness for how long? 40 days. Because he got to be tempted of God just like they were tempted of God for 40 years. I'm going to see if y'all going to serve me or not. But go ahead and read though. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, uh -huh. tempted of Satan. Go ahead. And was with the wild beasts. Uh-huh. And the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John put John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Keep and preaching what? The gospel of, of the kingdom of God. Do you hear anybody teaching the gospel of the kingdom of God now? Besides us? 
we got a we got a lesson called keeping fit for the kingdom, don't we? Because we preach the coming of the kingdom of God. Don't nobody, don't nobody teach about no coming of the kingdom of God unless it's of the true church of God. Read that again. 14. Uh-huh. Now after that John put was put into prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Uh-huh. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh-huh. Repent ye. And believe the gospel. Now, repent and do what? Believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Not what your preacher said or some theologian that told you. You understand? But look, we don't show you. Because what, what does most of the churches believe? That you going to heaven, not it's coming. Right. You understand? Not the kingdom is coming, but you going to the kingdom. Not you, that not the kingdom coming. Right. But even in the Lord's prayer, what does it say? Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Luke 11 chapter. Luke 11. Even in the Lord's prayer, what does it say? Luke 11. Everybody know that answer now, don't you? <laughs> but then people say this prayer, but they still say they're going to heaven, though. No. <laughs> Luke 11 and 1 Luke 11 and 1 Go ahead and read it And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place Uh huh When he ceased One of his disciples said unto him Lord teach us to pray Go ahead As John also taught his disciples Uh huh And he said unto them When ye pray say Our Father which art in heaven Uh huh Hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come Thy what? Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Not you going. You're not going to heaven. The church, the true church's teachings did not teach you that you were going to heaven. The true church teaches you that what? Thy kingdom come. Not you going. Read that again. And he said to them, uh -huh. When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Uh -huh. Thy kingdom come. Uh -huh. Thy will be, got, be done as in heaven, so in earth. Go ahead. Give us day by day our daily bread. Uh -huh. And forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Go ahead. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, let's go now. Let's go back to the prophets and see what that church taught under Moses' administration. Let's go to Daniel the seventh chapter. Daniel 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Let's go under the, uh, under, uh, under the old administration, under Moses' church, and see what was taught concerning this. Going to heaven. Uh, 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 we have Daniel 7 and 13. Daniel 7 and 13. When you get it, go ahead and read it. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven uh -huh. and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Go ahead. And there was given him dominion and glory and, and a kingdom. There was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. Who is this that was given dominion and glory and a kingdom? It is Jesus, isn't it? First Jesus. Go ahead and read. That all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Uh-huh. His dominion is an everlasting See, dominion. you might be saying, now, nah, ain't no such thing as God and all that stuff. That's cool. You understand? Ain't no such thing. Israel ain't in charge. No way. That ain't the Lord's people. No. All these things that people are saying. But when he come back, though, he's going to rule all nations. Amen. And he's going to have dominion over all nations. Then you're going to know that there's a God. And you're going to know his son Jesus too. Come on. You're going to find that out. He said, and there was given him dominion and glory and the kingdom of all nations, people and nations, and laborers should serve him. Who's the, go ahead. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Uh -huh. Which shall not pass away. Go ahead. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. And his kingdom, which thou shall not be destroyed. Let's skip down to verse 27 and see what his kingdom is going to be. Go ahead and read. 
and the kingdom and dominion uh -huh. and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom where? Under the whole heaven. Under the whole heaven. This is the teachings of the church of the old covenant and the teachings of the church of the new covenant. That's right, brother. Make a plan. The kingdom's going to be right here on this earth. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, uh huh. She'll be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. She'll be given to the people. Now, if you ain't talking about this kingdom right here, then what kingdom are you talking about? Because you talking about going up there, then they ain't the teachers of the of, of this of the, of the real church or the true church. Come on, brother, teach. Somebody else been teaching you. Satan said he want to go to heaven. Uh oh. And the kingdom and dominion, the greatest of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. Go ahead. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Uh-huh. And all dominion shall serve and obey him. Now we just going to, all dominion is going to serve and obey him, but we're going to do like the churches, the other churches do. We're going to read a part of a scripture. <laughs> what that next verse say? Here too is the end of the matter. That's all we read. <laughs> We're gonna read a part of a verse like the other churches do. He said, "Hitherto is the end of the matter. It's the end of the matter." So now let's go. Now let's go to Revelation, the twenty-first chapter. Revelation. Let's see what the the church of the uh, New uh, uh, Testament taught. Revelation twenty-one. We ain't got but a few more. Revelations 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Revelations 21. I'm just talking about the teachings of the true church. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The teachings of the, of the real church. Hallelujah. The church of the firstborn. Mm -hmm. The true church. 21 and Revelation 21 and 1. Go ahead and read that. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Uh-huh. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Go ahead. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Uh -huh. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The tabernacle of God is with who? Men. Didn't Jesus say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done? Yeah. And what is the teachings of the old church? The kingdom and the median and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people to say to the most high. Right. Now we read right here in the last book, what he said? The tabernacle of God is going to be where? With men. With men. And men, we dwell on the earth, don't we? Right. So if you ain't talking about this kingdom right here, then what kingdom are you talking about then? Mm. What kingdom are you talking about? You still running around talking about you going to heaven. You going, you trying to get to the wrong kingdom. Go ahead and read that again. Yes, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Uh-huh. And he will dwell with them. He gonna dwell with them. Uh-huh. And they shall be his people. Uh-huh. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now. Let's go to uh, uh let's go to Matthew the twenty eighth chapter. Back to Matthew twenty eighth chapter real quick. Matthew twenty eight, and we're gonna pick it up at verse sixteen. We got uh three more. Matthew twenty eight, and sixteen. Matthew twenty eight, and sixteen. See, we dealing with the teachings of the true church. Hallelujah. Time out for all that other hearsay and. Uh, uh, 